Manual Watershed Delineation is a five-step process. This is Training Module 2.04b for the Stochastic Empirical Loading and Dilution Model Seldom. This presentation has eight slides and will take about six minutes. It was prepared by the U.S. Geological Survey in cooperation with the Federal Highway Administration. This training module has two learning objectives. At the end of this module, you should be able to describe the five steps for watershed delineation and delineate a simple watershed. In this video, I will describe a number of topographic features. If you are not familiar with the terms, please watch our video on identifying land surface features from topographic contours. The first step in the watershed delineation process is to find the point of interest along a stream on your topographic map. This diagram is a hypothetical area on a topographic map. The solid blue lines represent a perennial stream. The dashed blue lines leading to the stream represent intermittent or ephemeral tributaries. The dashed blue lines in the corners represent intermittent or ephemeral tributaries to other streams. The brown lines on the map are topographic contours that represent land surface features on the map. The closed concentric polygons in the upper left, upper middle, and upper right of this diagram represent three hills. The low points between these hilltops represent two saddles. The bulges in the contour lines pointing downhill on the left and right sides of the diagram represent ridge lines or spurs. The bulges in the contour lines pointing uphill along the stream path represent valleys or draws. The gray circle with the crosshairs on the stream at the bottom center represents the point of interest on the stream. The second step in the watershed delineation process is to imagine or draw surface water flow lines that point downhill perpendicular to the topographic contours. Bulges in the contours that point downhill are areas of divergent flow. If we examine the ridge line along the left or right edge of the diagram, we can see that flow vectors diverge on either side of the bulge. The bulges in the contour lines pointing uphill along the stream are areas of convergent flow. We can see the vectors in these valleys or draws converge towards the stream. The third step in the watershed delineation process is to mark the topographic high points around the stream. Marking the high points provides the visual cues needed to keep the watershed boundary on track. Look for the high points around the stream starting from the point of interest. Follow the high ground systematically by going either clockwise or counterclockwise from the site of interest beyond the furthest reaches of the stream segments connected to the point of interest. Some topographic high points may not be of significance for delineating the watershed above a point of interest. For example, if the area denoted by the letter Z contained another hilltop, this hill would not be significant because all the runoff from this hill would drain to one of the tributaries that flow to the site of interest. The fourth step in the watershed delineation process is to mark the points along the contours that divide flows toward or away from the stream or its tributaries above the point of interest. Again, it is best to mark the point systematically by going either clockwise or counterclockwise around the basin from hilltop to hilltop. The fifth step in the watershed delineation process is to connect the points. In some areas, this can be difficult. In saddles, the dividing line between contours can be ambiguous. In some cases, there may be a wetland in the saddle that drains to both sides. Usually, one would split the distance between the contours or cross the wetland in half. If the saddle is small and the basin is large, it may be feasible to connect the points with a straight line segment instead of an arc. In some areas, the distance between contours is large and undulating contour lines obscure the precise flow direction. In such cases, it may be best to use judgment to find the average smooth line than to try to overspecify an uncertain boundary. In very flat areas with few contour lines and few definable topographic high points, it can be difficult or impossible to unambiguously define a watershed divide. In such cases, the convention is to split the distance between adjacent watercourses in areas where topographic delineation is impossible. If the situation is critical, it may be necessary to obtain high-resolution contour data on the order of 1 to 2 feet to delineate a basin. In this module, we learn the five steps for manual watershed delineation. 1. Find the point of interest along a stream on the map. 2. Imagine or draw surface water flow lines that point downhill perpendicular to the topographic contours. 3. Mark the location of the topographic high points around the stream. 4. Mark the points along the contours that divide flows towards or away from the stream. 5. Connect the points along the divide around the stream to delineate the watershed. Now you should be able to manually delineate a simple watershed. 